that is all my fan mail for the week. I'm probably going to do an unboxing sometime soon. Maybe if I don't catch fish today, I will do that. But today, we're going bass fishing. So I made it to where I'm gonna meet a subscriber to go fishing, which it, we actually met at, we're meeting at a hospital in uh, Red Oak, Iowa. But he just messaged me and said he's on the way. We are gonna go grab some food and then we're gonna do an interesting fishing challenge for you guys to enjoy. Uh, I'll get the chicken. 20 minutes later. So we are leaving Subway. I'm, I apologize to Jimmy John's, but there was no Jimmy John's in the town that I'm in. We are headed to the pond right now. It's 10 miles away. And we're gonna catch a big one. So we made it to the uh, pond. Ooh. Don't want to step in that right there. That's doo doo. You don't want to do that. But there's a. Uh, that's the pond right there. We are gonna do a broken rod fishing challenge. I brought two rods that I don't really need or care for and they're just kind of john b gave me one so sorry john b and then i won another one in a tournament and i've actually got a, a funny story behind the tournament is it was my uh sophomore year of high school i was fishing a tournament and we me and my partner ethan won these rods and reels for catching the smallest fish actually actually hang on I got a quick question for you. I'm filming a video and I am using the, uh, remember those old Daiwa D-cast reels, that rod and reel that we won in that tournament? Do, uh, do you remember, do you remember why, why we won, or why we won those rods and reels? We got the smallest fish in the tournament, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. I just wanted to get the, uh, the old verification from you. I'm telling the, the folks at home. All right. See you, Rick. See ya. Yeah. So that's, that's proof right there is. I caught one fish the entire tournament, and it was the smallest fish of the tournament, so I won a rod meal. So, it does pay off to catch flare fish. Alright, so I've got these two rods. This rod I won in a tournament when I was a sophomore in high school. And this one, John B. bought when we were in Missouri, and he didn't want to take it home. And, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this one. This one's for you, John. Alright, here goes one. <laughs> Kinda broke. We'll, uh, we'll go with that. Okay, so that's, uh... That's, that's pull number one. You guys can see how, how long it is. It's probably all of maybe like two and a half, three feet. That's rod one. Here goes rod two. That one worked. So that is uh, it's rod number two. One uh, quick tip for you guys at home for whatever god awful reason, if you guys want to do this challenge, make sure you bring a little file because when you break it, all there's like splinters everywhere. You see it's, Sit here and kind of smooth this off. Otherwise, it'll break your line. I'm just giving you fishing tips in case you decide to want to break your rod, or if you do break your rod, and then you're going to catch fish with them. But we've got a uh, chatterbait tied on and a uh, little Texas rig uh, stanko. So that's what we're going to be rolling with today. Fishing a farm pond, going to catch a pig. Where's the juice at? All right, we made it to the uh, pond. Hopefully, this wind wind noise isn't trash. The wind is pretty strong right here, so I apologize if it is. So since it's windy, I'm gonna start off with a uh, little green pumpkin chatterbait. It's also pretty clear um, looking at this water, so green pumpkin is definitely the uh, the right choice. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, cast, it actually didn't cast too bad. I'm worried about when I hook a fish is, is more what I'm concerned for, because there's no bend at all, and I'm probably just gonna end up breaking something. Oh, good God. Oh, did you see that fish? Dude, that was a big in. That was a big in. All right, I gotta loosen my drag a little bit, because I have a feeling that gonna break that was like probably at least a three pounder that just busted on this chatter bait i just pulled in this this is like a windblown corner is why i came to this spot this is a lot of times where they push bait fish up and stuff oh well, casting with this isn't actually too bad all right well i had a bite that's good oh, oh dude what how do i keep missing these fish that was at least like a five Dude, that was a giant. <laughs> okay, I've got hooks on this thing. This hook is sharp. Not sure what's going on. I my guess is there's just no flex. Dude, this this no rod thing sucks. There's no flex. They have no like. They've got no time to eat it. Well, we found the juice. That's good. If you guys enjoy these challenge videos and just not like serious fishing, leave a thumbs up right now. Drop a comment down for another challenge idea. 
I think they're kind of fun to do just instead of just standard try hard fishing is what you guess you could, I guess you could call it first fish first fish. first fish right there on the chatter bait I'm unable to actually hook anything because I'm <laughs> using a two foot rod but using a normal stick and caught a fish there we go perfect conditions for chatter baits and spinner baits it's partly cloudy and windy and those are the combinations you want but I'm determined to catch fish with my broken rod There's one. Got one. Oh, Senko, get out of there. Oh gosh, he's stuck. He's stuck. Oh, he's literally stuck on a stick. <laughs> he's literally stuck on a stick. I don't know which way to. Got him. I got him. Yes. Oh, no. Broken rod challenge. There you go. That dude came right out of that brush pile. I uh, flipped a little Texas rig Senko in there and caught a fish. All right, first fish right there on the Senko. See you later, Lucy. Sounds big, big. All right, I'll be back in a second. All right, well, there's a big one, huh? Yeah, look at that. We'll toss her on the scale. What'd you catch that one on? Chatterbait. Chatterbait. A little over five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah, five, six. New PB. Is that your PB? Yeah. All right, new PB. Nice, dude. See ya, Sheila. Good life, okay. Come on. There she goes. Nice. Let's go. Alright, he just broke his PB and I'm over here with a two-foot rod trying to cast a freaking chatter bait. Probably not a good idea to do the challenge today since there's big ones biting, but I'm gonna stick to it and see if I can catch one of them toads on a broken rod. There's one. Oh, I got one. I got one. Oh, chatterbait. Oh, baby. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Come on, don't break. Woo! Not a big one, but uh, I'll take it. Right in the top of the mouth. So that is fish number two uh, for me. I think I think Caleb and I both have two fish. He has a big five pounder, but uh, for using a broken rod and not being able to cast far and set the hook, and I'm just making up excuses, but uh, pretty, pretty stoked to catch this little dude right here. All right, see you later, Darrell. If you guys are wanting to try this at home without having to break a rod, just grab the nearest broomstick, tie some line on it, and it's pretty, pretty much this equivalent of what I'm dealing with today. Oh, there's one. Uh-oh, that might be a big one. Oh, oh! It's not a giant, but it's still a good fish. It's the biggest one for me, I think. Oh, maybe not. It's kind of hard to tell how big they are. Again, you, this thing doesn't really bend at all. There's uh, another chatterbait fish. All right, see you, Steven. So I'm gonna add a challenge to this. So I got the broken rod. I'm gonna cast it and retrieve it with the uh, real side down here. Whoa. There we go. Perfect. And uh, this is, I'm gonna add this to the, uh, the challenge here. Oh, I got one. I'm reeling upside down. I was, I was messing around. I'm doing an upside down broken rod challenge. I caught a fish. This is actually a lot harder than it looks. Okay. All right. Yep. There's a guy. Sick. That's that's number five right there on the, uh, the old broken pole challenge and uh, backwards reeling broken pole challenge. That's that, that right there took some skill. See you, Lindsay. There's a bite. All right. Let's see if I can catch this one. Yep, uh, okay, got him. Oh, finally, finally hooked one. Woo, get up here, buddy. On the Stanko. Not a big one, just another another two pounder. So far the big fish are eluding me, evading, eluding, I don't know what, what the word it is, but there's a Stanko fish. See ya, Jorge. What? Well, that dude didn't want to go back in the water. So the lure of choice here is a watermelon red flake Yamamoto Sanko fishing on a uh, two foot six inch. This is a uh, tourney special pole with some 15 pound line. That is the uh, 
the setup I've got going today. In case you guys are wanting to pick this setup up, I'll uh, drop the link down below. All right, well, man, I'm moving. I did not catch another fish over there. Caleb is over there catching fish. I think he's up to seven fish. I think I'm at eight, so uh, he's catching up. So I gotta go see if I can hook into a big one to see if I can take the big fish, the victory for the day. This is the juicy spot. This is where the juice is. I just threw my camera down, sick. But this is where the fish hit me earlier. I don't have a swim bait tail, so not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll see if, uh, see if the big girl eats the chatterbait again. There's one, uh-oh, it might be her. It might be the big one. It might be the big one. Oh! Well, it's not a giant, but I'll take it. I thought it was Big Bertha. Just, uh, just a whittle guy here. See you, Lucas. All right, well, that's another chatterbait fish. Not the size I wanted, and I'm hoping that by catching that fish didn't scare the big one away, if there is a big one here. But it's good that I caught another fish. There's a fish. Yep. Yep, another one. See, it calmed down, and there's no wind, so I picked up the Senko, and it seems to be to be doing pretty good. Oh, what the heck? Bruh! I caught a crappie. That crappie got the entire Senko in its mouth. Black crappie. I don't think it's my PB black crappie. This thing's probably about 12 inches or so. See ya, buddy. Oh, that crappie wanted to just come home with me. He's like, nah, fam, don't be putting me back in that water. There's one. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. He's running. He's running. He's running. Oh, old golly. Old golly. Water scheme. Water scheme. Yep. I was here texting the Guggen squad, and this dude just starts pulling away. Thanks a lot, Lunkers TV. I'm running out of names. What's your sister's name? See you, Brittany. Woo! She gone. Oh, so much for that. I'll just broke my chatterbait. Oh, I got no lures left. That's it, going home. See you, Rod. You too. So that is the end of this fishing adventure. Fishing with a broken rod that was about cut in half was actually a lot harder than I thought, but once you kind of get used to like not being able to feel anything and not being able to cast very far, it, it was really not that hard. I just had to learn to not set the hook like I normally do, which is I, normally I'm just kind of like ripping their heads off. You can't do that with a broken rod because there's not enough bend and you basically just rip the fish's lips off. And so that's kind of what I had to learn. And once I had that kind of figured out, I was able to hook into a few more fish. Uh, but I kind of went through tips as I was going along, you know, why I'm throwing a Senko, why I'm throwing a Chatterbait, the colors, it was fairly clear water, which is why I was going with like green pumpkins and watermelons and that type of stuff. The other thing is now that it is November, the water is probably pretty cold here. I would assume the water would be about 50, 55 degrees. So if you're fishing like a moving, like a chatterbait, you want to reel it fairly slow. Maybe use like a 6-4 to 1 gear ratio reel. As far as the Senko goes, I was throwing it weightless in which it just has a nice slow fall, which is why I think I was able to catch those fish. So if you guys are fishing a pond with a broken rod, hopefully you learned something and how to catch fish using broken rods. I thought it was kind of fun. If you guys like this challenge where it wasn't such like a try hard fishing video where I'm like just trying my hardest to catch fish and kind of goofing around, leave a thumbs up and drop a comment down below of another challenge idea um, other than some other than like the Barbie rod challenge or the gummy worm challenge, something that nobody's done. I want your guys' help to come up with some unique challenges for me and uh, the other members of the Guggen Squad to do together when we're down in Texas or anywhere collaborating this winter. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. There's a fish. Yep, that's definitely the biggest. That's a three pounder right there. Chunky little three pounder right there on the, uh, the shaky head. See you later, Jimmy.